My uh, company is called DMAS.net, and I started the company because I have long believed that, that nature wasn't designed for us to have to choose between a healthy environment and a healthy economy, that uh, there's clearly a pathway uh, to finding the alignment of environment and, uh, and prosperity and I've been spending the last 40 years basically searching for that pathway and trying to define it and understand it. So the company is organized to help other companies find that pathway. Specifically, I'm convinced that the pathway has to do with resources, that the only way that we're going to be able to have a sustainable society, take care of seven billion people, and uh, in, in a world where resources are constrained and our environment is increasingly stressed, the only way we can possibly do that is to dramatically change the way we use resources. Dramatically change the, the, the quantity of resources that are needed to support every human being. Well, as I said, that challenge for me was that I didn't believe that we should have to choose between a healthy environment and a healthy economy. And I see in the world around economists advising both business leaders and, and uh, government leaders that uh, the way to solve our problems is to stimulate the economy in a traditional way. And yet every time we stimulate the economy in a traditional way, we only increase the demand for, for resources. And as long as we're not thinking about how well those resources perform, how much wealth we're actually able to extract from each ton of resources available to us, we will just keep making the problems worse. And I think that's what we're feeling right now is a, a, the, the, all of the, the global debt crises, the global environment crises, international tensions uh, are all about resources, all about people, countries, companies jockeying uh, to secure the future supplies of diminishing resources. Well, about five years ago, several colleagues and I began to study uh, new advances, I, to identify and inventory advances in science, in technology, and in approaches to business that might tell us something about our humanity's present capacity to uh, meet the demands of a growing population uh, with the resource base that we have. And uh, I was doing that in preparation for a book initially, but what we discovered was to us breathtaking. We discovered a design revolution going on bubbling beneath the surface of public awareness that has the potential to change society and make possible the production of much, much more wealth for many more people with a fraction of the resources per capita. We, we found uh, companies around, uh, spinning out of university research laboratories around the world using a radical new science in biology and nanotechnology that have the capability of, of, of drastically changing the ratio of wealth production to resource production. So I'm convinced that what we have to do is move from, we have to learn to decouple the production of wealth from the production of stuff. We need to move from an economy that's just focused on mass production to one that's focused on the reduction of mass in the production of wealth. Well, there are many, many examples, and some of them are represented by people who are speaking at this conference, but uh, uh, for example, we're looking at uh, companies that are working on lighting technology. What's the future of lighting? Well, what we found was um, companies in a number of different countries that have, again, spun out of university research laboratories that have developed working models of paint and wallpaper that have embedded in them uh, micro-organic uh, LEDs 
and so you paint the wall and apply three and a half volts of electricity to the wall and the light and the wall glows. Well, this technology has the ability, for example, to completely eliminate the lighting infrastructure of buildings, which is millions of tons of, of copper and, and other uh, rare metals, and, and you know, not just the light bulbs, but the fixtures and the ballasts and the, and, and the whole systems. And to, and to do it at a, fr and to, to be able to light rooms at a fraction of the cost that it, it now costs. And we're, we're seeing this, you know, we're all used to this radically doing more with less when it comes to information technology, but very few people are really understanding that that same capability of producing much more value with much less resource mass is coming to every industry. And uh, the, the companies that get it are going to be the ones that thrive and survive and the ones that don't are not going to. And the countries that get it and nurture those technologies and their application are going to be the ones that thrive. Uh, and the ones that ignore it will be left out. And it's, it's, uh, it's not necessarily the same companies this, and the same countries that are on top right now. One writer who was important to me in developing my early thinking was a man named Aldo Leopold, who wrote that uh, ethics is awareness of interdependence. And uh, I've never forgotten that quote, and I, I love it because um, I think it's really important that the people who are acting ethically are people who understand uh, the interconnectedness of human enterprise with natural enterprise, and people who understand the their interdependence with each other. And uh, it is absolutely essential in the world of the future that leaders understand that um, there's no such thing as a self-made business person. There's no such thing as, a, um, as, as doing something on your own. Uh, everything we do is standing on the shoulders and connected to uh, everything that's ever happened before and everyone else who's, who's living right now. So, I think that's a, a, a very important characteristic. Well, I think it's important to understand that the idea of doing dramatically more and better with less, with fewer tons of resources, is the future. And uh, as I said, companies that get it, le or leaders that get it, will be the leaders of the future, and those who don't will not. We've entered a point where um, in a, in a resource-constrained world where I, I like to say that innovation has direction now, that um, every major innovation that is going to drive uh, economic and social development is going to have to do with the way we use resources, with improving the amount of value that we get from every time. Well, if I didn't think that we had the potential to do what I'm talking about, uh, I would be very depressed. But I think that uh, awareness that, in fact, it isn't the presidents of countries or the presidents of corporations that actually hold the trump card in this picture. Uh, nature holds the trump card. Nature is telling us we absolutely have to change the way we do things. The question that the thing that worries me is that uh, we listen, that we wait too long, uh, thinking that oh, there's a little bit more of copper in the ground we haven't gotten. There's a little bit more oil, so we don't have to worry yet uh, about it. And the longer we wait, the more painful will be the transition. And the sooner we act, the more exhilarating uh, it can be, and the more opportunities there will be for us. So, uh, what keeps me? happy is that I know that the change is going to happen and understanding that is really very helpful. The, uh, uh, the, as I said, the thing that worries me is thinking that we're delaying too long and not paying attention to the, to the signs that are coming to us.